Oh, hello. Don't mind me. I'm just getting a little photosynthesis in before I turn in for the night. Oh, sorry. It's been a long day of making my own energy from sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water so I can stay healthy and grow some more. I try to photosynthesize as much as possible. I'm a plant. That's what we do. But between you and me, I gotta take some breaks now and then. Say there's a drought, for example. Ugh, I hate those. I gotta close my stomates more than I'd like or else I'd lose a lot more water than I can afford. <laughs> you humans, you have no way of knowing what's going on with us plants sometimes. You don't even notice something's wrong until we're already turning brown. But you know, now that I think about it, maybe I could run an idea by you. You know how photosynthesis works? Well, a photon, a little bit of sunlight, hits my leaves and gets absorbed by these special kind of molecules called chlorophyll. You may have heard of chlorophyll before because that's what makes us all so green in the first place. The thing about light, you know, there's all these different kinds of it. There's red light and blue light, all the colors of the rainbow, and light you can't even see with your eyes. The chlorophyll molecules are really good at absorbing red light and blue light, but in between, they reflect most of the green light away. And that's what you're seeing when you look at plants like me. Anyway, a photon from the sun hits my leaves and gets absorbed by the chlorophyll. Most of the time, that energy goes straight into photosynthesis. I get my energy and make some sugar and oxygen. But every once in a while, something else happens. Instead of going into photosynthesis, that little bit of energy is re-emitted, kicked back out again. I can't help it. About one time in a hundred, it just gets away from me. The thing is, the amount of light I end up putting out this way, it's called solar-induced fluorescence if you want to get all technical. It depends on how much photosynthesis I've got going on. More photosynthesis, more fluorescence. And when I close up shop, no more outgoing photons. It's like a built-in status report for us plants, and if you could find a way to see it, you'd know a lot more about what's going on with us. You know, important stuff like how we trade carbon around, and how we respond to changing temperatures and extreme weather, all in real time. Of course, it would be kind of hard to see this tiny signal from fluorescence with all of that reflected sunlight overwhelming it, but I had a thought about that. You see, the photons I emit, they're not the same as the ones that bounce off my leaves without being absorbed at all. They've lost a little bit of energy. So if you had a way to look at different kinds of light, you could see it. That's what got me thinking about that Orbiting Carbon Observatory 2 satellite you've got. As long as it's already up there measuring CO2 all over the world, you could use it to look for solar-induced fluorescence too. It's not that different from what you're doing already, and think how much you could learn about us plants. Not to mention the whole planet's carbon budget. Oh, oh, that's my cue. Give it a thought, would you? It could really help us all out. Good night.